Earth is a complex and interconnected system, teeming with life and natural resources, but as we continue to progress, it becomes crucial to assess the health of our planet and make informed decisions for its sustainable future. The evolution of this planet and its atmosphere gave rise to life, which shaped Earth's subsequent development. The solar system formed about 4.6 billion years ago from material in a massive, rotating cloud of gas and dust called the Solar Nebula. Gravity caused this cloud to collapse in on itself, spin and flatten into a disk shape. Most of the material in that cloud was pulled toward the center, forming the protostar that would eventually become our Sun. The rest of the material began to come together into clumps called planetesimals. These in turn gradually came together with other planetesimals, forming larger bodies called protoplanets. Earth started as one of these protoplanets, about 4.5 billion years ago. Earth formed around 4.54 billion years ago, approximately one-third the age of the universe, by accretion from the solar nebula. Volcanic outgassing probably created the primordial atmosphere and then the ocean, but the early atmosphere contained almost no oxygen. Much of the Earth was molten because of frequent collisions with other bodies which led to extreme volcanism. While the Earth was in its earliest stage, a giant impact collision with a planet-sized body named Thea is thought to have formed the Moon. Over time, the Earth cooled, causing the formation of a solid crust, and allowing liquid water on the surface. In June 2023, scientists reported evidence that the planet Earth may have formed in just 3 million years, much faster than the 10 minus 100 million years thought earlier. 4.5 billions of years ago, a version of our Earth that looks very different than the one we live on today was hit by an object about the size of Mars, called Theia, and out of that collision the Moon was formed. How exactly that formation occurred is a scientific puzzle researchers have studied for decades, without a conclusive answer. Most theories claim the Moon formed out of the debris of this collision, coalescing in orbit over months or years. A new simulation puts forth a different theory, the Moon may have formed immediately, in a matter of hours, when material from the Earth and Theia was launched directly into orbit after the impact. For the first billion years of Earth's existence, the formation of life was prevented by a fuselage of comet and asteroid impacts that rendered the Earth's surface too hot to allow the existence of sufficient quantities of water and carbon-based molecules. Life on Earth began at the end of this period called the Late Heavy Bombardment, some 3.8 billion years ago. The earliest known fossils on Earth date from 3.5 billion years ago and there is evidence that biological activity took place even earlier, just at the end of the period of Late Heavy Bombardment. So the window when life began was very short. As soon as life could have formed on our planet, it did. But if life formed so quickly on Earth and there was little in the way of water and carbon-based molecules on the Earth's surface, once the early rain of comets and asteroids upon the Earth subsided somewhat, subsequent impacts may well have delivered the water and carbon-based molecules to the Earth's surface, thus providing the building blocks of life itself. It seems possible that the origin of life on the Earth's surface could have been first prevented by an enormous flux of impacting comets and asteroids, then a much less intense rain of comets may have deposited the very materials that allowed life to form some 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. Comets have this peculiar duality whereby they first brought the building blocks of life to Earth some 3.8 billion years ago and subsequent cometary collisions may have wiped out many of the developing life forms, allowing only the most adaptable species to evolve further. First and foremost, the formation of the Earth's oldest known rocks provides crucial insights into this era. The Ishwa Greenstone Belt in Greenland, for instance, contains rocks that date back to this time. These rocks offer valuable clues about the conditions and processes that existed billions of years ago, including evidence of ancient volcanic activity, sedimentation, and the presence of early life forms. Another compelling piece of evidence comes from the fossil record. Microfossils, such as stromatolites, had been discovered in various locations worldwide, notably in Western Australia and South Africa. These microbial communities played a pivotal role in shaping the Earth's atmosphere by producing oxygen through photosynthesis. The Earth from 3.5 billion years ago began cooling in the Archaean Eon. And because it was cool enough, water could finally condense to form its first oceans. This was in large part because the Moon stabilized Earth's climate giving it seasons. 
Also in the heavy bombardment stage, this is when scientists believe comets transported water to Earth. The alternate theory for the origin of water is that it existed all along in rocks inside the crust. Because Earth's interior contains minerals with hydrogen and oxygen, volcanoes continually degas releasing H2O as water vapor. Now that the Earth's climate stabilized, water no longer evaporated from extreme temperatures. Finally water condensed, then oceans remained. And because Earth had oceans, this is where life began. At the start of the Archean Eon, Earth was without free oxygen. Water molecules had oxygen but they were bonded with hydrogen. In this eon, Earth's atmosphere was mostly methane and nitrogen. The only life forms that could exist were anaerobic cyanobacteria. In the absence of oxygen, these microscopic cyanobacteria converted sunlight to energy. They carried out photosynthesis in the oceans metabolizing their own food. As a waste product, cyanobacteria released oxygen. It might be hard to believe when you compare our watery planet to the barren red desert that is Mars, but Earth and Mars were not so different once. What is now known as the arid red planet was flowing with rivers and lakes 3.5 billion years ago. We are so acclimatized to the presence of oxygen on our planet Earth, that we take it for granted. However, oxygen was absent from the Earth's atmosphere for close to half of its lifespan. When the Earth was formed around 4.5 billion years ago, it had vastly different conditions. At that time the Earth had a reducing atmosphere, consisting of carbon dioxide, methane and water vapor, as opposed to the present-day atmosphere that consists primarily of nitrogen and oxygen. Though sunlight split the water vapor in the atmosphere into oxygen and hydrogen, the oxygen quickly reacted with methane and got locked into the Earth's crust, barely leaving any traces in the atmosphere. A silent mysterious force worked to release oxygen steadily, until the very composition of the atmosphere changed. Cyanobacteria among all the biochemical inventions that life could conceive the ability of cyanobacteria to utilize water as fuel for oxygen generation must rank as one of the most ingenious. Researchers hypothesized that the levels of oxygen released into the seawater by cyanobacteria gradually increased over time and that over a span of 200 to 300 million years, oxygen was produced at a faster rate than it could react with other elements or get sequestered by minerals. The oxygen released by cyanobacteria steadily accumulated over vast swathes of the ocean and oxygenated the water. Gradually, the accumulated oxygen started escaping into the atmosphere, where it reacted with methane. As more oxygen escaped, methane was eventually displaced, and oxygen became a major component of the atmosphere. This event known as the Great Oxidation Event, occurred sometime between 2.4 to 2.1 billion years ago. These studies indicate that the chemistry of the Earth's atmosphere changed dramatically as oxygen levels rose and replaced methane. Further it is hypothesized that accumulation of oxygen in the atmosphere led to one of the earliest ice ages on Earth. Methane is a greenhouse gas, since it traps heat from sunlight and warms the planet. As methane was displaced by oxygen, global temperatures cooled sufficiently to generate ice sheets that extended all the way from the poles to the tropics. Back 1.1 billion years ago, the Earth began a shimmy shake and split along a 1,800-mile arch that looked to be well on its way to creating a continental divide that literally would have divided into two continents. What we know of today as Lake Superior Basin might have become an ocean, perhaps like the Atlantic, which also emerged from such a continental split. One of the notable occurrences was the formation of the supercontinent Rodinia. Rodinia was a massive landmass that brought together various continental fragments. This consolidation of land masses had profound implications for the planet's geology and the evolution of life. During this period, the Earth experienced fluctuations in climate. The planet transitioned from a relatively stable and warm climate to a cooler one. These climate changes influenced the distribution of habitats and affected the evolution of organisms. The emergence and diversification of eukaryotic life forms marked a crucial milestone during this time. Eukaryotes are organisms with complex cells containing a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. The evolution of eukaryotes paved the way for the development of multicellular organisms and the subsequent explosion of biodiversity. While complex multicellular life forms were still in their early stages, 1.1 billion years ago witnessed the emergence of early animal life. Fossils from this period reveal the presence of simple, soft-bodied organisms like sponges and jellyfish. These early animals played a vital role in shaping the trajectory of life on Earth. In 250 million years, the vast majority of Earth could become inhospitable to mammals as the planet's landmasses merged together to form the next supercontinent. 
A supercontinent is just what it sounds like. The last supercontinent that existed on Earth was called Pangaea, and it split up roughly 200 million years ago. During the Triassic period, dinosaurs were just starting to emerge. They were not the dominant creatures yet, as other reptiles like crocodiles and large amphibians roamed the land and water. However, dinosaurs were evolving and diversifying, adapting to various environments. Fast forward to 200 million years ago, the Jurassic period. Dinosaurs had become more widespread and diverse. Giant herbivores like Brachiosaurus and Stegosaurus roamed the lush forests, while fearsome predators like Allosaurus hunted for their next meal. As time went on, dinosaurs continued to evolve. By 145 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period, new species emerged. This was the era of the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex, a fearsome predator with sharp teeth and powerful jaws. Meanwhile, herbivores like Triceratops and Hadrosaurs roamed the plains. But the world was about to change dramatically. Around 66 million years ago, at the end of the Cretaceous period, a catastrophic event occurred. A massive asteroid impact, combined with volcanic activity, caused widespread devastation. This event is believed to have led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Six million years ago, our journey begins in Africa, where our earliest ancestors, known as hominids, roamed the land. These hominids, such as Australopithecus afarensis, were primarily herbivores and spent their days foraging for food. Their work involved gathering fruits, nuts, and plants to sustain themselves. Around 2.5 million years ago, a significant development occurred. Homo habilis emerged, and with them came the first evidence of tool use. These early humans crafted simple stone tools, which revolutionized their work and daily lives. They used these tools for various tasks, including butchering meat, cracking open bones, and shaping other materials. Finally, we arrive at our own species, Homo sapiens, who emerged around 300,000 years ago. Our ancestors' work during this time was marked by innovation and creativity. They developed more sophisticated tools, including blades and needles, which allowed for improved hunting, clothing production, and the creation of intricate artwork. Around 10,000 years ago, a monumental shift occurred in human history. The advent of agriculture revolutionized our work and way of life. Humans began cultivating crops, domesticating animals, and settling in permanent communities. This marked the birth of civilization, with specialized occupations emerging, such as farmers, artisans, and traders. But these evolved beings have the most sophisticated tools in the universe that have the power to change the planet or maybe anything, and that is the brain. With the progress that humanity has made today, it has been able to discover the depths of the ocean, and the wonders of space. But humans are the only generation of creatures that destroy the Earth. <laughs> 